Hi, I am Kim and I am a Solutions Engineer for the Palo Alto Networks Live Community Team. In today's video, I will talk about some of the cool things you can do with Palo Alto Networks URL filtering feature. Some of the topics I'm going to cover in this video are how to use the ACC to monitor the web activity. We can view URL filtering reports. Inside the reports section, you can see the user activity or URL filtering for custom reports you can create. We will also go over the response pages and also how to match traffic based on URL category for policy enforcement. And we'll also go over decryption and safe search. Assuming you already have a URL filtering profile in place and applied it to your security policy, you can go to the ACC, which is the Application Command Center, which is the second tab on your firewall. Notice that on the left-hand side you have a time frame you can specify for the period you want to review. Let's, for this example, select one hour. Notice how the page immediately updates and shows you the information for the selected time frame. Then you can scroll down to the URL filtering widget, which is right here, where you will see the URL domains and categories that are being accessed. Notice that the section is dynamic. You can click on any of the categories and drill down to get more details. Notice what the top URL domains are for this specific category. To go back to the main view, click Home. If you do not see a category that you would like to see here, you can use the filter function. Click the plus sign, go to URL filtering, add the category that you would like to see, for example, auctions, and apply the filter. Notice the auction category with the count for the last hour and the top URL domains used in this category. Clicking again will drill down deeper. You will see the top URL categories, or URL domains, excuse me. Click down further to get, to drill down and get even more details from your source user, users and source addresses accessing that specific URL domain. Just click home. Your filter is still active. Clear all your filters and apply to get back to your initial screen. You can also maximize to view a lot more details because here you will only see a top 10. Notice that by maximizing the view, you will have all the top URL domains and the top counts and the matching categories. You can add the filters by clicking, again showing you more information, and you can drill down even further to look for the information that you need. Click Home, clear the filter to get back to the initial screen. Next up are the URL reports. To view the built-in URL filtering reports, go to the Monitor tab. On the left-hand side, select Reports. And then on the right-hand side, click on URL filtering reports. Here you will see all the predefined reports that are generated daily. You can select the predefined report you are interested in, for example, blocked sites. And then in the calendar below, you can select the date you are interested in. You can use the information here on screen or you can export to PDF, CSV or export to XML. Next up is the user activity report. You will find that one also under the monitor tab. Go to PDF reports, user activity report. To add a new report, click on add, give it a name. As a type, you can select user group or dynamic user group. I will go with user, type in the username 
or IP address for which you want to create a report. Select the time period you, you are interested in. Last seven days, for example. You can include detailed browsing if you're interested in that or not. And you can click OK, which will generate the user activity report, which you can then use later on in an email scheduler, scheduler, for example. Or you can go ahead and run now. Once it's generated, you can go ahead and download the user activity report. Which will have your report downloaded for the time frame specified. Let's close the report for now. We can close this one as well. If you want to save the user activity report, hit OK. This will create the user activity report, which you can then use later on in, for example, the email scheduler to have it mailed to you on a daily basis, as an example. Next up is the custom URL filtering reports. To generate a detailed report that can also be scheduled, you can configure a custom report and select from all the available URL filtering log fields. To add a new custom report, go to the Monitor tab, Manage Custom Reports on the left side, and click Add to create a new report. Give your report a name. From the database, Go ahead and select URL in the summary database or URL in the detailed logs. The difference is that you'll get more detailed information in the detailed logs. For example, the summary database will only provide you uh, URL domains, whereas the detailed logs can give you the complete URL. You can select a time frame any time frame that you're interested in. I'll select for the last 24 hours. You have a bunch of sort options and group by options. And then you can go ahead and add the columns. I will add action, count, category. I'll add destination country. I will add the source user. And I will add the URL. That's traditionally what's in a URL filtering report, but you can change it and customize it as you like. You can also have the option to add a custom query here using the filter builder. You can manually type in your query here or use the, the form below to add your filter. Once you're done, you can hit the run now button and it will create the report for you. Again, you can export the report to a PDF, a CSV, or an XML file. You can click OK and use it for later use. However, note that currently it is not scheduled. So if you want to schedule the report and have it mailed to you on a daily basis, for example, make sure to enter the report and check the scheduled checkbox. Hit OK. And notice now that the scheduled column is enabled. Next up is the response pages. You will find this under the device tab and on the left hand side response pages. Here is a list of all the available response pages and notice that three of them are specific to URL filtering. If you click them you will see that there's a predefined page already available. You can select it export it and then customize it to your liking. That way you can communicate your specific acceptable usage policy or your corporate branding. In addition, you can add variables for substitution at the time of block event and you can add one of the supported response page referrers to uh, external images, sounds or style sheets. In order for the continue and override page to work, that is a page that will pop up and will block the user initially, but will allow him to continue anyway after entering the password. In order to enable that, go to Setup, Content ID, and in the, admin, in the URL Admin Override section, add the password, optionally the SSL TLS Service Profile, 
and the transparent or redirect mode. Depending on which mode you select, you might have to enable the response pages on the interface, the customer facing interface. In order to do that, go to the Network tab, Interface Management, enable response pages to any of the uh, already available management profiles or create a new one and add response page to, uh, to it. And then don't forget to add that management profile to the customer facing interface so he will get the pop-up window and the a possibility to enter his password and continue. In this case, this is my layer 3 trust interface, which is my, in my uh, customer facing interface. I will add my response page management profile to this interface. Next up is to match traffic based on URL category for policy enforcement. After you have monitored the URL traffic, you should have a basic understanding of what types of websites and categories that users are accessing. With this information, you can then create a custom URL filtering profile and attach them to the security policy rules to allow or deny web access. As an example, I'll show you a policy that controls and blocks access to social networking category, but at the same time will allow access to LinkedIn, which falls under that same category. For that, you can go to Objects, URL Filtering. There's a bunch of URL filtering profiles already there. I'll just go ahead and start fresh by uh, cloning the default one. Once it's cloned, it should end up at the bottom. I'll call it Block Social. Let's search for the social category. Social networking is currently allowed. Let's block that entirely. There we go. Block social networking. So if we should apply this URL filtering profile to a security policy, it will block all access to all social networking websites. That being said, I would like to allow LinkedIn. In order to do that, I would need to create a custom object in the custom objects menu URL category. Let's create a new one. I will call it Allow LinkedIn. And then I will add them. Alright, so that's not all I need to do. Now I need to go back to my URL filtering profile that I just created. The block social networking. Notice how my allow, link, allow LinkedIn custom URL category is now visible here. So I will allow it. So now all I need to do is attach this URL filtering profile to a security policy and my users will be blocked when trying to access any other social networking website which falls under the social networking category, but are still being allowed to the LinkedIn website. So in order to do that, we go to the Policies tab. If you don't have a rule set up already, we'll create a new one. Allow LinkedIn. Source, Layer 3 Trust Interface, Destination, Layer 3 untrust interface, action, allow, but we're going to apply the security profile to it, URL filtering profile it was, and I named it block social networking. Hit OK. Alright, so with that, we have a new policy in place. Allowed LinkedIn which will allow traffic from my trust to my untrust interface. My profile is set up to block social networking, but allow LinkedIn, so LinkedIn should be okay while blocking everything 
else in the social networking category. Next up is the decryption. URL categories can be used as a match criteria inside of a decryption policy as well. We can see that in the Policies tab and then go to Decryption. In some cases, you might not want to decrypt certain categories because of legal reasons. Financial or healthcare institutions come to mind where privacy is important. Notice how I configured a no decrypt policy from my source layer 3 trust zone to my destination layer 3 untrust zone for two categories, financial services and health and medicine. The option was set to do not decrypt. And I have another decrypt policy in place to decrypt all the other categories. Next up is safe search. Just about any popular search engine has a safe search option in order to filter out not safe for work or adult results. When this option is enabled on the firewall, this will prevent users who are searching the internet and are using one of the supported search platforms from viewing the search results, unless the strictest safe search option is set in their browsers for this search engine. In order to enable safe search, simply go to the objects tab, go to your URL filtering profile, go to the URL filtering settings and enable safe search enforcement. Don't forget to apply this uh, security profile to your security policy. Some users may try to bypass this security by using different search engines. In that case you can block the entire search engine category and then using a custom URL category allow only the specific set of search engines in a similar way how I showed earlier in the video to allow LinkedIn while the entire social networking category was blocked. That concludes this video for today and I hope to have shown you that URL filtering is much more than simply mapping a category to a website and can actually be a very useful tool. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.